1933, General Electric came out with the 866 Mercury Vapor Rectifier Tube. They also came out with the GG1 locomotive, but let's talk about tubes and not trains. This is one of my favorite tubes. I love how this tube sounds sonically, and you have to love how this tube looks visually. The filament of the 866 is 2.5 volts and draws 5 amps. And being that this tube is just a single diode, you're going to need two of them if you want full wave rectification. Now that diode I just tossed can't handle 5,000 volts, but this 866 certainly can. Now let's calculate the filament current for a minute. If we're drawing 5 amps per tube, that means these rectifiers are drawing 10 amps of current just to heat them up. And why do we have to heat them up? Because the liquid mercury needs to be changed over into vapor. If not warmed up slowly, this tube can short out, which is one of the drawbacks. You have to put this tube on a standby switch and warm it up 30 to 60 seconds. On top is the filament of the tube, and the tube is in standby. That's why it's not glowing blue. Have you seen a more beautiful tube? Let's take it off standby. This is not a tube you want to break. Under these top caps, there's also high voltage. You really have to be careful. There's the 3B28, which is a xenon filled tube. It is a direct replacement, and it is safer. There's also the 836, which is a traditional vacuum tube, but it has a huge voltage sag. It will not perform as well, but it is a beautiful tube and really needs a little more recognition than it gets. So these rectifiers are sitting in a power amp that I made. This is a 120 watt power amp. We have four KT88s, two 7N7s, and another one of my favorites is the Raytheon RK34. There are other tubes with mercury and other gases, like argon, krypton, usually in rectifiers and voltage regulators. A notable favorite of mine is the CK1006 tube. I discovered this tube by accident when working on a 50 Stromberg Carlson PA. I didn't know what I was looking at when this was a rectifier tube. The 1006 tube can actually operate with no filament. That's the filament right there. It will shorten the life of the tube, but this was pretty invaluable for the army for battery operations in the field, which is where this tube was used. Back to our 866. One thing I like about this tube tonally is that it's quicker than other traditional rectifiers. It only has a 15 volt drop, so it's not as quick as a solid state rectification, but it is quicker and has less sag than your traditional rectifiers. Looking through the data sheet, this is our anode, this is our filament. There's a lot of information about heating and cooling it so you don't damage the tube. You have to run this tube vertically. And this tube can draw about a quarter amp continuous, so a pair will give you a half an amp. Why the mysterious blue glow? Well, when current hits the mercury vapor, the mercury vapor is ionized. These are arc rectifiers from an elevator system. Arc rectifiers are still used today in elevators and even trolley systems. Now you're not going to see these tubes in guitar amps, a few esoteric hi-fi builds, but these were really popular in vintage radio transmitters. Where you need three, 400 watts of transmitting power, this is a great set of rectifiers.
Hey, thanks for watching. And there's no copyright issues here. This is our old band, Heavy Creatures. Me on drums and my amazing wife, Kelly, on guitar.